One of the key benefits of mobile mapping or autonomous mapping is the speed of capture. You can gather whole facilities in you know, minutes or hours uh, that would otherwise take days to, uh, to capture. And so the idea is you can gain regular information updates that then give you the ability to do progress monitoring either in the field or remotely without even having people involved. Uh, similarly, on the quality assurance side, uh, one of the key things for uh, reducing waste or uh, problems in uh, construction and AEC and geospatial data in general is the ability to compare versus plan and to monitor where you're going. Uh, being able to check in on projects as they're moving forward is a great way to maintain quality and to reduce wastage as you're, uh, as you're building or as you're uh, updating a, a project. Uh, can we do the next slide? So a little bit about where mobile mapping in general sits. If you think of a very simplistic workflow here, the idea basically is you capture data, you post-process that data to make it usable and standardized, and then you analyze it. You put it into a system that then gives you a global context and allows you to generate insights from it. So uh, companies like Exxon sit on the front half of that. We focus on rapid, high accuracy capture, and then the post-processing of that data to give uh, in the field uh, quick data uh, understanding. And the post-processing also gives you the ability to fuse data together into these uh, rich data models that then can go into third-party software suites such as uh, Trimble Business Center or Autodesk Cloud Compare, et cetera. Um, what this means for us is that it gives, uh, gives us the ability to focus on things that are really, really helpful to the end user, uh, but also means that we get to partner with a lot of the great companies doing uh, the data insight work on the back end of all of this data collection. Uh, next slide, please. So this is kind of a traditional breakdown in use case and technology, the idea being uh, terrestrial scanning on the right-hand side and uh, the SLAM mapping, as I mentioned, simultaneous localization and mapping on the left-hand side, uh, especially early on when SLAM was still pretty, uh, pretty young and it wasn't really a very mature technology, you found it mostly used for getting a general sense of things, getting context for uh, more detailed scans, getting an understanding for uh, what you're trying to capture. And then the terrestrial scanning still held all of the survey, all of the uh, data model generation, and most of the, uh, the work that you were actually doing to uh, create digital BIMs and that sort of thing. Right, next slide. Now, over time, what you actually found is that as SLAM mapping became more mature, uh, accuracy has improved, uh, it became a uh, more regularly dependable uh, technology, you start to move to the right so that you can take advantage of the rapid speed, uh, the still high accuracy, but then the ability to do lots of scans at low cost. And so you start to take over some of these things like site progress monitoring, routine industrial inspection, uh, scan to BIM, pre-construction, et cetera. You can read the, uh, the slide. Uh, there are still scenarios where terrestrial scanning is far superior. You can get better accuracy. You can get down to millimeter level uh, detail. And so for like high precision cases or where you need to do really, really uh, accurate scans, there's always going to be a requirement or a use for terrestrial scanning. So the benefit for uh, high accuracy teams, or excuse me, high performing teams, is to figure out which parts of their use cases are better for mobile mapping versus terrestrial scanning. Uh, next slide, please. So this is an example of some of the uh, 2D and 3D modalities that are able to capture with a mobile mapper. Uh, this in particular happens to be uh, uh, our office. Uh, but the idea is that you can capture uh, this full space in under a minute. You walk around and capture it. You can get both uh, visual uh, LIDAR structural data as well as secondary uh, digital information in a rich data model just by walking around the space. And in this case, um, this is visualized through a third-party tool that allows you to do uh, combined photosphere and uh, geometric models. That gives you flexibility to gain context for the model itself, but also to make it just more usable um, even in the field. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, these are also examples of uh, customer-gathered uh, data sets. Uh, we didn't use them. Uh, it's actually people out in the field gathering stuff. Uh, so you get some really interesting captures here. Uh, this is an example of uh, an office space that they're remodeling. They gathered, I believe it was uh, four floors uh, across uh, both an industrial space and an office space. Uh, really fascinating to see them uh, gather this data. Also took about five minutes for them to walk around the whole space, uh, export into a tablet, and do it all in the field. They never touched the cloud, and they never touched a desktop in order to get all of that data together. Uh, similarly, this is an industrial space. Uh, I believe it was an airport uh, remodel. 
and they would use it for construction monitoring, uh, making sure they understood where the systems went in and that they went in in the right order. Uh, next slide, please. So the extension of this beyond purely mobile mapping is autonomous mapping. And the idea here is that for highly repetitive uh, gathering, you want to have something that is out in the field where you don't even have people present at all. So the idea is you have a single person maybe back at your headquarters, and there are dozens or hundreds of systems out in the field gathering information. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is a great example of the overlap of terrestrial and mobile mapping. In this particular case, what we did was we used a mobile mapper to capture the base map, which is mostly what you see here. And then for high accuracy areas where they wanted precision uh, monitoring or precision gathering, denoted by the plus signs here, that was where they did terrestrial scans and then georeferenced them into the base map, which is what we captured with a mobile mapper. What this meant is that instead of taking five, six, seven hours to gather the whole data, whole uh, map with terrestrial scans, it took about, I think, 20 or 30 minutes to to, uh, to walk the space with a mobile mapper, and then another you know, 30 minutes to do those four specific scans uh, with a terrestrial mapper. So you save a huge amount of time, and especially for operational facilities, it means you have less downtime, uh, less perturbation to operations for the, uh, for the customer. So this was a great use case uh, that we saw and, um, and was really helpful because you can use really large captures to gain a quick understanding of a space. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is another interesting use case because mobile mappers started to get a lot of uh, traction indoors where it's really difficult to, uh, to gather high, um, high volume uh, scans because of shadowing, because there's a lot of complexity in the space. And so uh, as you start to move outdoors, you start to find interesting different use cases. Uh, my favorite uh, element of this particular one is that there's a, uh, a construction test site in the bottom here and uh, they were doing a comparison of a whole bunch of different uh, tests um, or scan modalities. And uh, someone put our scanner on the back of a, um, an all-terrain vehicle and captured the entire uh, property before the other even set up to do the first scan. And then we were able to get the, uh, the post-processing done on a tablet before uh, the others had even finished scanning. So it was really impressive and uh, helped us understand how to make, the, uh, make our customers successful. Uh, next slide, please. So this is um, another really interesting one where we did both terrestrial and uh, mobile scanning. In this case, we did an autonomous uh, scan of the bridge, both under and on top, uh, using a drone. And the critical piece is that this is something that is regularly scanned by uh, terrestrial scanners. They would have to shut down traffic both directions for you know, three or four hours. Uh, the whole amount of scanning took about three hours. Uh, in our case, the drone scanned the whole thing in about five minutes. They anchored on either end with one terrestrial scan, uh, either end to make sure that they could link it to the global map, and they only had to shut down traffic for about 25 or 30 minutes total. So if you're doing the math, uh, that's four times faster than you would otherwise need. Uh, much less perturbation means a single team can gather you know, five, 10 sites in a day rather than uh, taking you know, one site or two sites per day. So a uh, great increase in, uh, in efficiency for us and uh, was a, a great example of how to use both technologies uh, beneficially. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and I'll include this one specifically because it gives you a little bit of a sense for how the system works in an industrial environment. Uh, you see the, uh, the orange is basically occupied voxels or structure, and the white voxels that are uh, being pushed back represents the unexplored frontier of what you're uh, scanning as you go. And that's actually how the uh, robot views the world it senses uh, where it's trying to go and positions for maximum information gain. Uh, so it's interesting to watch the system actually create its understanding of the world around it. Um, next slide, please. And uh, this is a great example where we actually combined both terrestrial scanning and mobile mapping on a single robot. Uh, we collaborated with Trimble, the an X7 scanner on a spot, and then our mobile scanner up front. And this is actually how we've done some of those captures where you create a base map with a mobile mapper and then do precision scans at specific intervals throughout the space. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I think for time, we'll probably skip through this one. Um, one that was unexpected to me was forestry. Uh, we got our start doing underground work, and what that meant is that we were able to do autonomous scans below tree canopy at night doing forestry uh, mapping. 
And so we've got a lot of now work doing that kind of scanning, uh, both for safety, forest fires, for uh, harvest, for making sure to understand the different types and uh, density of trees. All kinds of use cases that I don't really understand even as well, but I know that people really like it. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is another good example of uh, progress monitoring. Um, a lot of the work that we did in mining then led to uh, tunnel mapping, and specifically safety monitoring and tunnel mapping and construction of new tunnels. And the idea is that you can send systems in where you cannot put people because you don't want them to be in really dangerous environments. And it allows you to do very regular scans, uh, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever periodicity. But it allows you to actually do things you could not do before, which is part of the power of mobile mapping. Next slide. So to summarize, mobile and autonomous mapping, specifically SLAM, dominates in speed and coverage. Terrestrial mapping is still dominating in terms of uh, high accuracy but is slower and less flexible. And so the high-performing teams combine the two technologies to figure out where each one works, and uh, then you get the best overall data model. Thank you very much. Any, I don't know if we have time for questions, but uh, thank you very much.